Like Thomas Edison's light bulb was the surprising and unlikely origin of the tube oscillator, the work of Alexander Graham Bell led to the creation of the synthesizer filter. It was the multiplexing efforts of AT&T's employees Otto Zobel and George Campbell that contributed to the filter as we know it in synthesis, as controlling and manipulating harmonic content was crucial in being able to have multiple phone calls exist on a single phone line. The Telharmonium, arguably the first synthesizer, created its sound by generating the entirety of its harmonic content with rotating pitched cogs. Once the electronic oscillator was created, it was discovered that its output could be manipulated to easily generate harmonic-rich waveforms without needing an oscillator per harmonic. When a filter was applied to this harmonic-rich output, harmonics could be removed or accentuated, resulting in differing timbres. This was a novel and economical approach to creating waveforms which didn't require a multiplicity of oscillators. All of these bars represent a single sound. Each bar represents a frequency present in the sound. They are harmonics and are arranged in a sequence from low to high. The first and lowest of these is the fundamental, which is a sine wave which defines the frequency of the musical note. It's the note we hear. The rest of the lines represent the harmonics which increase in frequency and decrease in amplitude and are the individual sine waves responsible for the timbre of the sound. The volume label on the left will demonstrate the change in volume of these harmonics as the filter is applied. The filter has a tunable cutoff frequency, which defines what frequencies in the sound will be removed by the filter. The frequencies to be removed are defined by the filter type. The low pass filter. This successively removes high frequencies from the sound. The harmonics above the cutoff point are progressively attenuated or removed. The high pass filter. This successively removes low frequencies from the sound. The harmonics below the cutoff point are progressively attenuated or removed. Band pass. This is a combination of high and low pass filters resulting in a band of frequencies being allowed through. The harmonics above the cutoff point of the high pass filter and the harmonics below the cutoff point of the low pass filter define the band of frequencies that are passed. The degree to which the harmonics in the region of the cutoff point are removed is called the slope. It is visually demonstrated by the angled bar in the graphic. 24 decibel per octave means there's a 24 decibel drop in volume for every octave of frequencies attenuated by the filter. 24 decibels per octave is a steep slope. Fewer of the frequencies cut off are heard after they're cut off. So in the case of the low pass filter, you can hear relatively little of the frequencies above the filter cutoff point. 12 decibels per octave is a more gentle slope, allowing more of the attenuated frequencies to be heard. Compare the angles of the angled bars of the 24 decibel per octave filter and the 12 decibel per octave filter and you'll see what I mean. Resonance is an effect where the frequencies at the cutoff point of the filter are amplified. This results in a change of timbre. Different filter types and filter slopes result in different sounding resonance. When the cutoff point is varied by control voltage, this frequency boost moves through the frequencies present along with the cutoff point. If the resonance is boosted enough, the filter will resonate, which results in it going into self-oscillation and producing a frequency tunable sine wave. We are going to explore the basic function of the filter through the use of a variety of vintage synthesizers, like the Yamaha CS15, the Moog Mini Moog, and the ARP 2600. We'll hear some different filter types and filter slopes, and we'll examine how control voltage can affect the function and sound of the filter.